title, this is Exploring Materiality, Experiments with Bio Art. So kind of thinking about how this can kind of be crafted, I just wanted to run through kind of the agenda for the day. It's kind of just the introduction space. We're here streaming in and I just hope that we can take the time to maybe take a breath with each other, just become present and to open the space to each other. So if we would like to just take a deep breath in. And just settle yourself. And if there's something that doesn't resonate with you in this workshop or something that you get really excited about, please share it in the chat. Please stop me at any time to kind of just interrupt because interruptions are welcomed here. If there are thoughts that are flowing through you, I would love for everyone to see them and for us to talk about them. I can go more into crafting the space. I'm really just here to act as a facilitator. I'm not teaching anything. I'm more so just sharing what I've been discovering as I've kind of fallen into making bioplastics. So is there anything that you feel can help support you as we go through those? Is there anything that you need to be seen or held or anything else that can offer support? Um, the slides feel like they're just a flow through and this workshop is just a conversation. There's a part where we can break out into breakout rooms or just keep it in the main room and have conversations with each other. But I've been thinking about this workshop as I was crafting it as just a space where we can kind of play and explore and think about bio art. So the first question I have is what is bio art? If we want to kind of shout out or write in the chat what our thoughts are about bio art, or if you've heard this word before, what do you think bio art is? And there's no wrong answer. I see in the chat biomimicry, maybe art that's related to nature, <laughs> literally no idea, that's okay. <laughs> Does anyone else have any thoughts? There's no pressure to share because going into the next few slides, we'll kind of just like, we'll discover together what bio art is by just looking at it together. And I see in the chat, something connected to biological forms and also creative expressions using biomaterial, DNA, et cetera. I would say it's all of these things, even the things that we do not know. I feel like bio art is really something that we're discovering as we're going. And I know that there is a whole biotechnical field that exists and it's so new to me. So as I'm in this workshop sharing this with you, this is also very new to me. So we're kind of in this together. And what it has been for me is kind of just a material that I have, I've been able to use to kind of express myself to make art. So going into this next space, it's kind of just a space to speculate on what we think. If we're kind of dreaming together and imagining what could this look like if we're just looking at images of bio art, what worlds can start to be created? So I'm hoping to kind of create this as an activity that feels like if we're looking at an image, then we can start to speculate on the type of worlds that could exist inside or around that. So I'm going to go through these images and then talk about the activity. So I put image descriptions and these are how I read these images. So if there's anything that anyone thinks could kind of shift the language in the image ID, please feel free to write it in the chat. And I can also share the Google document after and I might share it right now so we can all be looking at it. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen for one second, just so that I can make sure that you all have access to the stock for one second. Okay, I'm going to drop this in the chat right now. So if we can all click into that, please let me know if you can't see this and then we can 
just look at all of these materials together. So I'm going to start sharing the screen again. Okay. So this first image, a black keyboard sits on a green on green grass. The keyboard is a fading QWERTY, a layout for Latin script alphabets. There are seed pods and plants growing out of the keys. In this next image, a set of red lips covered in pink, yellow, and white bacteria sits in a clear petri dish. A hand wearing white gloves holds the dish against the white background. In this next image, a mass of SCOBY scans. SCOBYs are symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast, and it sits on yellow, orange reflective background with green bacteria like shapes that appear in the background. And also to say this, I forgot to say that. Some of these forms look a little gross. <laughs> so I'm sorry to not forewarn that. <laughs> so if you feel uncomfortable looking at any of this, please let me know or just take care of yourself. Stop looking at the screen. And this next image is a substrate made of mushrooms that is suspended in a clear case against a white background. The substrate has splotches blue, orange, and green gray. So kind of going through all of these images, I'm just really questioning, how can we start to imagine what these worlds could look like? If any of these images are interesting to you, can you start to imagine what the world around, outside, or within the image looks like? I was thinking that we can kind of break into smaller groups, or if it's comfortable to keep it in the main room, to kind of just talk about do any of these image, images resonate with you? Would you like to look at them in your Google Doc on your own screen and kind of fill in, what does this make you think of? And as a way to kind of think about this a little bit further, to kind of generate, if we are thinking about creating a new world in response to these images, what could the hopes, dreams, fears, rules, or values of all of these societies be? So I'll scroll through so we can look at these images again. But at this point, I just kind of want to talk to everyone. How do you feel about this activity? We can kind of guide it as it feels good to all of us. I was slightly bothered by the lips one that you have on the screen now, just because they're disembodied in a way that makes me, I don't know, worry about where they came from, I guess. Mm. Does anything about the disembodiment and like kind of worrying about the connection? I don't know. Would you like to say more about that? Um, I'm not sure what more to say. It felt like an abrupt switch from mm. the very alive image of the sprouts coming out of the keyboard to this one that there's something about it that feels like a, a CSI image from one of those TV shows. Mm, I can definitely see that. I think we can kind of just hold on to that feeling and think about how the things that we are creating and like what are the perceptions when other people start to look at them. I'll go back to the slide to kind of think about. So we can start here and kind of just think about if we're imagining what the world around this keyboard looks like or who are the people that may have left us behind? What is the society that this exists in? And then we can go through one by one and kind of take our time with this and go as fast or slow as we need to. So if anyone wants to raise their hand or shout out or write in the chat what this first image makes them think of or who they think could have left us behind or what. Well, I could say what I wrote in the chat, which is like, um, it makes me think of how nature will persist regardless of human intervention. In, intervention, um, You know, like once we're, our species, species has either like, you know, passed on or um, evolved, nature will still be there like um, doing its thing. Hmm. I also put on the live chat just so we can all see what you're saying. Thank you for sharing. Did you want to add anything else to that? Not at this time. Okay, thank you. Does anyone else, would anyone else like to say anything about this image? I can also read what's in the chat.
nature persisting, our world being merged, our biological world with tech, seems post-apocalypse, which is sad because we could have plants growing in keyboards right now. That's true. <laughs> we could have that. I think that these are really interesting thoughts. So I would like to shift to the next one, if that feels okay with everyone. So kind of going back to these red lips, I think it was a really interesting point that Rebecca brought up of just the disembodiment or kind of feeling like it looks like CSI. So I'm curious about if this kind of resonates with anyone else or if what does it mean if we start to disembody ourselves while we're exploring these biological processes? In the chat, I see, I hope that they are fake. <laughs> they are fake. Dorothy says that they have written about this work, which is nice. Would you like to say anything, Dorothy? Sure. I, I mean, just to Rebecca's point, the um the I the irony for me, <clears throat> excuse me, is um yeah, like Ani Lu's work is uh, it, the artist is um when I wrote about this, this is actually called Kisses from the Future. So it's mm -hmm. a speculation of what if one day in, in you know you're in your dating profile and then you can see someone's microbiome. Mm -hmm. And that's just stuck with me for a few years. So that's what this makes me think of. I think that that is really interesting. If we start to have parts of ourselves kind of embedded into these systems, which we already do, I think that, I know it's really interesting to think about the microbiome and its relation to dating and just the relation to the human body. And make, these are things that are growing on us, inside of us, and around us that we don't really see on a daily basis. I think it's interesting when we start to bring this to the forefront and start to look at it in this way to kind of think about, oh, where else is our biological data actually existing in the world? And thank you for sharing, everyone. I like to switch over to the next image to kind of think about where this could go. And Dorothy's also saying about the unseen effects for the rest of our lives. So going to this image, so full transparency, this is SCOBY skins, not actual skin. So if this image makes anyone think of anything or kind of what could this world be or what values exist in this world, or maybe what are the dreams of this being that exists in this space? And there's also no pressure to respond. If this image doesn't really resonate, that's totally fine. It's, it looks it's, like crinkled chicken skin. Go ahead. Sorry, um, it's hard for me to um, conceptualize something because the background is so uh, energetic and happy mm -hmm. and uh, hopeful, I think. And then the front ground is this mass of melted looking skin. And it doesn't, it's like the opposite of what the background feels. Hmm. that's a really good point of observation of just that juxtaposition of <laughs> you see this thing in the forefront and you're like oh this yeah and the background feels really vibrant and alive I think that that's a really interesting observation I also see in the chat people are saying it looks like a very damp and humid and warm world this is something I imagine school lunch <laughs> or originating from and also a world inside out our bodies. And we can kind of shift. Thank you everyone for sharing for that one as well. And also some more chats are coming in. The background looks very microscopic and the image is very visceral, the wetness, the organic contours. And I think that it goes far to mimic, simulate humanity. I think it's really interesting and also thinking about human innards. So in this next image, does this kind of make anyone think of anything? Or what type of world could this type of material exist in? Or maybe what are people imagining when they look at this? The multiverse of mushrooms. <laughs> like a painting in a museum of bacteria. 
I think that's interesting if we can start embedding mushrooms into paintings. And also, I, for me, it kind of makes me think of the process of decay and life. And what could that look like if artworks were kind of always in the state of decay and regeneration? Vivian says, I wonder if the multiverse exists. It reminds me of a map leading to adventures. I love that. I would say that this is probably a really good point to kind of shift over into just going, it also has the color of the earth. Just going into what are all the thoughts that we've collected now in this space? And something that I was doing, because this is a very experimental workshop, so we're kind of building this together as we're in it, is what does it mean when these images are separate from the people who created them? Does that kind of shift the narrative? If we recognize where the story is coming from, can we relate to it more? If it's something where maybe the author is stripped away, does this take on a new meaning? I think those are things that just came to mind when I was creating this workshop. Nothing to answer now, maybe something to hold on to. I would like to shift over into going through the activity. Thank you everyone for participating. I think that the thoughts are really, I don't know, it's, a, it's really nice to just see what people are thinking when you see something kind of taken from its context. And for me, I think that that's a really big part of, I don't know, what does it mean when we are using technology that is kind of removed from its source or removed from its origin? So if we started with using, for say, Adobe programs, and we're not really connected to where did they get this language from? Why are they using this language? And kind of starting to shift that into critical questions of, we're using this technology today and we don't really know where it's coming from or the origins that are connected to colonization. So I just wanted to kind of use that space to be very experimental to see. I think it's really nice what Dorothy is saying, to start thinking and imagining kind of the intent and purpose and just kind of imagining that. I, I want to start shifting into what I've been doing just to show you all what is possible. So something that is really important to me is really having conversations about food and having conversations about eliminating food waste. And I'm really learning a lot of words about like food justice, food sovereignty, food apartheid. And these are all very big words and very heavy terms that are really ground into the system and into many systems around the world. And it's something that I'm slowly unpacking because it's a lot, but it's something that deeply resonates with the way I've lived my life as just a human in America, kind of navigating through going to community pantries growing up and growing up in a way where we had Section 8 housing and understanding how a lot of these things were just systems that we are a part of. So I'm wondering how can we kind of reclaim ourselves if we are existing in these systems how can we kind of reclaim ourselves if we're using art or using something like food, using a technology as food and finding ourselves in it once again, finding a way to kind of connect ourselves back to the land and back to our bodies. And this is just something that I've been exploring. And I hope to open this up as just a conversation of what do we think about after I show you everything? And this is ongoing. And if anyone has any resources or if there's any way to like correct me, I want to use the space to be wrong and to learn at the same time. So kind of going into what I've been doing of using food waste to make these experiments, I've started with creating natural dyes. So this is a project that I've been working on. I'm in grad school right now and I'm at Parsons and just kind of thinking about what does technology mean to me? And I really kept coming back to food. And I just wanted to use things that were going bad in my refrigerator and experiment with other things. So from the left to right, I had strawberries that were rotting in my refrigerator. So I boiled them and turned them into a dye. I had onion skins that I was collecting that I also turned into a dye. 
And then for the turmeric, I had a bunch of turmeric at home and I wanted to explore how I can make a diet out of that as well. And this is kind of just a process of how did I get from here to into bio arts? So I started this with just kind of making a bunch of alginate molds. So alginate is created from seaweed and sea material. I'm still learning the full forms of what it is, but it is something that can break down. But I started with plaster casting and recognized, oh, this is not sustainable, but what does it mean to kind of move through this material that is available? I was inspired by Kisses from the Future and I was thinking a lot about consumption and the things that I've been eating or the things I've grown up eating and kind of turning those into these mouths. So on the right, the mouth is made from strawberry dye. The one in the, and everything is made from agar and glycerin and just poured into the molds that you saw right before. And then also this one on the left is made from moss from my garden and agar and glycerin. <laughs> yes, we can make one. I'm going to share recipes at the very end so you can learn how to make these. But the workshop is not long enough for me to teach you how to make these bioplastics. I wish it was. I'm just going to go through all of these. These are more mouths that I made with moss from my garden and just thinking about, oh, can I make a container out of the bioplastics? And everything here is made out of bioplastics and moss. I made a bunch of mouths moving from these materials, which are the plaster, to something that is more ground and, oh, now I'm using earth and plaster, to embedding things like cookies into the bioplastics, to even making bioplastics out of soap and turmeric and the strawberry dye. This is a cast of my foot that I turned into a bioplastic, embed it with moss. This is my other foot <laughs> made with strawberry dye. And this, this is just something I should give another warning, I apologize. But this is when I start to experiment with what if the bioplastics start to dry and what does it mean if I start to like embed parts of myself into this work? So I've taken hair clippings and fingernail clippings and started to wonder what could this relationship be if I'm putting these parts of my body into these reused alginate molds? And also, what does this mean? Oh, I'm not sure about that work. Thank you. And this is kind of where this work is existing now. So this is the same mold from before in this shot, where I was kind of starting to layer the bioplastics. So it's kind of just taking all of the materials and dripping them over each other and embedding messages. Because I started to think about what does it mean when these materials that are degrading, what does it mean if they can start to hold something, hold a message or hold a memory? Oh, I wish that these could be in person as well. Oh, I, yes. Um, so I'm trying to keep up with the chat and also respond. And this is also something that is connected to that past image of this mold was used to make a plaster cast of something on my body. And then just trying to embed a message of thinking about my soul, thinking about where I'm at right now as a human and kind of trying to like encase it into the space that I know is just a temporary space. And this is pretty much the work that I've been exploring all semester. So this is just my Instagram and where you can reach me. I've been creating, I'm going to stop sharing the screen right now and we can go back to anything, but just so we can look at each other. One second. Okay, hello everyone. <laughs> Perfect. So thank you for sitting with the work and Thank you, Dorothy, for sharing the cookbook. And there's more that I'm going to share once, or there's more at the end of the document where you can see just more resources to making these bioplastics at home. If anyone has any questions, we can kind of use the rest of this time to talk about that and to kind of talk about, does any of this resonate with you? Does this make you think of anything? 
do you want to try this in your classroom? Do you want to try this with your friends? So yeah, so the space is for everyone to kind of just think. I see that Rachel has raised her hand. Um, would you like to talk, Rachel? So I'm I'm trying to figure out which slide number this is. Um, 21. It looks to me like it might actually be growing. And I'm curious if you have made art where it changes on its own after you finish with it, whatever finish means. That this one? Mm -hmm. So what I've been doing with the art after, so because I've been using food waste, um, it starts to mold very fast, especially if I keep it in a closed container, which has happened many times, like, on accident, I'm just like, oh, I brought it in this bag. And now starting to notice within a couple of days how the bacteria starts to grow on it and it starts to consume the whole substrate. So I think that that's kind of the next life of this project is kind of just capturing the bacteria that starts to, not, I don't wanna use the word take over, but starts to kind of make itself known and present. And it's like, I'm here, I'm alive. I was already here, but now I'm showing myself and I'm seen. So it's kind of, yeah, where that is starting to shift over. Thank you. Yeah. And then in the chat, I can read some of the messages. Vivian says, yes and no, because it looks dirty and gross. <laughs> Thank you for being so honest. I would say that the process of it is definitely, it can feel gross because if you're not really a textual person, the sensations can feel unusual. But to me, they feel very soothing of just being able to touch something that feels plasticky but isn't plastic. And it's very fun to make at home. And then I see, so dope. I know nothing about this and feel excited to learn more. And same, my students would find this technique engaging. At the end of this document, I wanted to show the artist that I referenced and kind of where I took the work from and the inspiration and then just more spaces to kind of think about this. I wanted to give a shout out to GenSpace. I just found out about GenSpace at the beginning of the month, and that's New York's first community lab where you can kind of just learn how to make bioplastics. There's a bioplastics club. You can learn how to do a bunch of other stuff, infusing biotechnology into just things that we can find in the world around us. There's another cookbook in there for bioplastics and then other sources that I was using to kind of craft this body of work. And then also just some recipes that were shared with me throughout this process. So I see coming in on the chat, I can relink to the slides. Um, I also see loved idea of making sure that your material is sustainable, like an art and science experiment. I could definitely see that being used in art and science and kind of shifting the way science fairs have been seen and perceived in the past. But let me relink really fast. I'll stop sharing so we can look at each other. And if anyone would like to talk, please go ahead. I'm sorry, I was okay. I didn't raise my hand. <laughs> oh, that's okay. <laughs> no, I'm just geeking out because I worked in biotech for 14 years. And so I just like really loving your, <clears throat> excuse me, my throat, really loving your presentation. But also for anyone who's interested, I, I stuck something in the chat regarding Walter Katundu's work, Ancient Air, where he tried to capture air prior to the Industrial Revolution. Wow. And, and he because he was commissioned to do these awards for mayors around the world that are doing a lot of climate justice work. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to, them to remember this is the air that you're trying to kind of go like we want to kind of preserve this. I, I just thought it's such a beautiful, moving work. I felt like folks here might be interested, especially you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. This is very interesting. I've never heard of this before. Thank you for sharing everyone in the chat. I guess I'd like to use the rest of this time to kind of, if anyone feels comfortable to talk or if we just wanna keep chatting in the chat, that's totally fine. I'm just trying to preserve everything that we're saying in the chat. I guess the question that I have to everyone that's here right now 
is after seeing what I shared and also looking at the link to the slide presentation, where do you think the future of this could go? Or where this, how could this technology kind of expand into if the youth are playing with this type of material, where could they start to dream? Or how can we all start to dream collectively? If any of that resonates with anyone. Is it Leila? Leila, yeah. Leila. Thank yeah, you. thanks. Uh, well, I work with students, but mostly in um, computer science. Uh, and uh, yeah, today we had a workshop and uh, in our country, they still really use the, that plastic thing to uh, pack your food and then you can't recycle it. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about um, how they, uh, we, we were talking about that and I was thinking about how they even not, uh, are, they are not bothered with that. So I think these kinds of uh, experiments in, in, in schools could spark a lot of, um, I don't know, creativity and um, make, make them think about alternative ways of not just packaging things about building, I don't know, tables and, and stools that are alive. It reminds me also uh, of uh, a, a, a stool in June. If you read the book, uh, the, the, these stools are alive. And mm -hmm. then they shape, and when you move, they shape uh, according to your body. And um, it's kind of nice. I, I, I remember this, uh, I think Neri Oxman, she's an mm. architect. Yeah. yeah, using all these uh, biomimicry, someone, someone also uh, yeah, uh, posted about my biomimicry, these uh, shapes and uh, materials that uh, are sustainable and uh, make, uh, make our architecture different than the way we see our world because architecture really affects how we perceive our world and how we feel about the world around us. So a lot of, um, I don't know, uh, materials that we use today, uh, not just plastics, but also these, uh, I don't know how, because English is not my native um, mm -hmm. language, the, the thing you, you use for building walls and uh, how the do you say that? Wall. Yeah, the, 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 the construction materials, they're really like bad this. for the environment. Yeah, not just bricks. Uh, we call it beton, but I'm not sure how you say it in English. That's okay. I'm gonna Google it. I'm gonna Google it. Thank so you. So, anyways, yeah, it's really inspired. Uh, this inspired me, and I really want to thank you for a nice uh, workshop. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. <Bye. laughs> thank you for really just like speaking to that. I think what you're saying about architecture and kind of like the world shifting around us is really interesting. And like, what could that look like if the buildings were kind of responding to the climate or kind of responding to the humans inside as we move around? Um, is your name Denese? Please correct me. Um, sorry, no, um, I go by Scar actually. So um, going off of what um, Leila said, um, there's two things that I want to mention. One is a long time ago, actually, I saw, I read a whole, I've watched a, do, a whole documentary about how um, a, uh, an architect uh, ha, had a daughter who had a lot of um, health issues. And um, so he built his entire house out of hemp, oh, like wow. hemp, hempcrete. And at first he was all um, laughed at and like, um, you know, looked down upon, but you know, his daughter got better mm -hmm. considerably and so like there are solutions that we can um out there but there's always that negative stigma that we have to fight against to uh, before people get uh, take those solutions seriously mm. i've also seen um people use uh like tubes with um spores of mushrooms inside of them to build the structure for buildings which was really cool to see it was a, at first it was an art project then it got taken into like the next level wow. it'll be cool to see what the next level for uh, your work might be <laughs> um but it, it's 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 cool that the the solutions are there we just have to work to implement them i think that's a really good point of just thinking about alternative ways of living and kind of just building these structures around to actually support our lives. So I'd like to thank you for sharing and thank you, Lila, for sharing as well. Layla, I wanted to say it correctly. Um, 
I think it's important to kind of just start thinking about there are solutions already here. And if we even want to use the term solution, it's like if there are other alternatives and the ways to kind of help us live in a different way or to help us like just be healthier. I think it's important to start thinking about, oh, how can this thing that feels so small build a bigger structure that will then support a bigger thing that if we're taking the time to kind of break it into smaller parts, we can imagine it in a, in a different way. So thank you for sharing everyone. And we still have time for, we have about five more minutes left in this workshop. Um, we can go through the chat and kind of just see what people are thinking. It's nice to see so much conversation in the chat. Do you have Twitter? I don't have Twitter. <laughs> I just have Instagram. I've never used Twitter before. Thank you for sharing all the links, everyone. And I see in the chat, oh, would you like to say anything? I see in the chat, people are also having conversation about the biotech ways and how the medical industry uses a lot of plastic. I've started to see um, materials be used, like we were talking about just before, of like getting past plastics. I've seen bioplastics be used to kind of shape around the food. So instead of taking like a plastic bag to a store, you can just take a bag made of bioplastics and then you can cook your food inside of everything that's there, which is just an alternative that I've seen before. But I think it's interesting to start thinking about how can these structures become bigger and support us? But if anyone else has any thoughts, we can just use the rest of this time to kind of sit and reflect on everything that we kind of looked through today. So Dorothy, I'm currently building a website to house all of this work. And yes, grad school has been a lot. <laughs> so trying to get around to that this summer. And then I can share that. Would anyone that's here like to talk about, and we're all from such different places, would we like to talk about how we've seen or would like to see something where we're from kind of change in relation to how materials are used or how different things are wasted or maybe how food is wasted? Is there anything that we feel connected to with where we're at presently, like where our physical bodies are that we would like to see be a little bit different in the world? You can, yeah, you can speak. Uh, so I'm from the Dominican Republic. Uh, I'm not there physically at this time, but every time I go there, it's kind of heartbreaking and just a negative like shock to see how little infrastructure there is to um, take care of the garbage problem. You know, they just kind of like pick a, pick an area and just, dump everything in the same area and it's just it's it's just uh, negative all all around so um you know I wish there was a way to change that um because it's it's a huge problem in the entire country except for the resort areas that uh, people that travel there don't really get to see yeah I think that's a really important point I, I live in New York right now and the trash problem here is just like having the trash be like dumped onto the sidewalks. And I think that that's really interesting what you're saying because how do these things kind of make us like change how we view the environment? I'll stop speaking. So you can also speak. How do you pronounce your name? Khadija? Yeah, Khadija. Okay. Um, I just was thinking, so I'm, I'm from Brooklyn, but I'm currently in Addis Ababa. And um, just thinking about how like waste is not evenly distributed and because there's such profound income inequality, there's like a strata of people, particularly from peripheral regions and like dispossessed indigenous people who are forced uh, to recycle, reuse and like make a way out of waste. 
um, and also in regions where there are famines. There's been times when people have like shared information about how like recovering information about botany and like how to get gain nutrients from plants, mm -hmm. which sounds compelling, but also is like a product of profound like state sanctioned violence. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, you know, uh, I guess like that's the flip side because when I see artists like you, I feel like it's so beautiful. And at the same time, like, how do you not just entertain romanticism? Mm -hmm. um, because there's some people for whom they have no choice and it's like not, it's not a pretty picture. That's such a valid point. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> like, yeah, I think it's important, especially what you're saying about not just romanticizing this and to say, yes, I'm using this because of this, but understanding that this is a, bar a part of a bigger issue. And this issue, it's different for everyone. And I think it's important to start kind of having these conversations right now to say, we are all living differently. How can we start to live in a way where we can start to meet each other's needs? And understanding that a lot of these things are created out of the response to colonization, to, like you're saying, state-sanctioned violence. I think it's important to start even talking about that and imagining how we can come up with something that is possible instead of just like you're saying, moving past, oh, this is pretty, but how can this actually create structural change? So I would say that's a really good note, kind of wrap up this presentation and just things to kind of hold with us as we're kind of shifting through the rest of our day and kind of shifting through these systems that we are still going through on a daily basis. So I would like to think Thank everyone for coming today, for sitting and listening, for thinking and contributing to the chat. So thank you, everyone.